along with keto, fasting has become very popular over the recent years. And some of you were upset, I would even say distraught, leaving crazy comments on my keto video last week. And let me set something straight with you twerps. Just because you can't eat a loaf of bread every day and look like me, doesn't mean you have, you know, come on. Let's get back to reality. Let's start listening to the dietitian, nutritionist, demigod, master genius, huh? huh? You know, eat a loaf of bread a day, still look like a chisel out of marble. Come on, who are you gonna listen to? Who are you gonna listen to? These people eating only meat that uh, can't sleep for a week after they have a tablespoon of wine? Like, like, come on, back to reality, guys, back to reality. So we wanna differentiate fasting from intermittent fasting. Fasting, hypothetically, being several days to weeks at a time, whereas intermittent fasting is an eating window. And then there's even dry fasting, which is kind of crazy and stupid, but we'll get into that later. The point is, when most people talk about fasting, they're actually intermittent fasting, which I don't have as much of a problem with. And that's actually how I eat sometimes. I wouldn't even consider it the term fasting. In my previous videos on fasting, I basically explained that the person should achieve adequate tissue nutrient status before considering restricting caloric intake. The reason most people need to fast in the first place is because their body is so deficient in certain vitamins and minerals that they have an irregular appetite, eat everything in sight of poor quality food, and just keep gaining weight. Problems with fasting are similar to the problems of the keto diet. It slows down the body's ability to remove toxins, and in most cases, promotes the reabsorption of toxins. You can check out that video on keto last week, and keto is a bit worse because it promotes the hyper-release and hyper-absorption of toxins from the liver. In the case of fasting, your liver will still be releasing toxins, negative things into the digestive system, but since you're not eating any food, the toxins will kind of just sit there and, and quickly be reabsorbed into the bloodstream, maybe some of them will get excreted, and then those toxins are just going right back into the liver or the other organs. As far as I know, most people's bodies are so polluted from the toxins in our environment, food, water, air, that the removal of them from the body should be the top priority, which fasting isn't effective for. And it's not like, you know, at some point in time, you just stop removing toxins and you're finished. No. Unless you move to Antarctica where they're eating like Wagyu whale meat or something, the modern environment is full of toxins. So it's a constant need to detox. There's no point in time where you should really consider fasting. And yeah, it's not as damaging to your liver as keto or carnivore, but it will certainly slow your health progress. So if you're fasting for more than 24 hours, 48, 72, a week or two week fast, you really need to reevaluate and at least try the type of diet I've been following before thinking that fasting is your end all be all solution. And guys, I have fasted extensively in the past just like I've done the carnivore diet and I've done everything a lot of you guys are still following. You know, I remember when I was going to Hunter College in the city, I was on like day 13 of my two week fast, longest I've ever fasted. I could barely walk down the street. I felt like I was about to collapse. Got in my car, drove home and, um, and ate something and in a few days I regained my strength, but never again. I usually fasted one or two days out of the week. I usually didn't do the long stuff that often. Intermittent fasting, on the other hand, is more reasonable. It's eating on a timed schedule, whether that's eight hours of eating with six hours of fasting or more restrictive like OMAD, one meal per day. Still not the best for liver detox and health. Ideally, you want something consistently in your stomach to be pushing out toxins. That means two large meals per day or three medium-sized meals per day. I noticed when I delay my first meal too long, I don't really feel well, I typically get headaches, and I definitely cannot sleep. Yeah, it's fine to go four, five, six hours without eating in the morning, that's what I do. But I would say the latest you want to eat is one or 2 p.m. and then have another meal at night before you go to bed. When you only have one meal per day, the gut motility is reduced and toxins aren't expelled as quickly as possible, but it's not nearly as bad as fasting for days at a time. And if you're actually pretty healthy and not in too bad of a position you know, to start your health journey, then you could probably do OMAD the entire duration. It's just 
you know, with the degree of liver damage I had and how sick the carnivore diet made me, it, it was one of those things that had to be adjusted and critiqued to optimize the liver detox, organ health, cellular health. Now, I've never been a fan of dry fasting. I've been very vocal against it, although I haven't brought it up a lot. Crazy, crazy, crazy thing to do. You're going against your body's natural thirst instinct. It's just, it's just stupid. I mean, I can really go a day, two or three without getting super hungry, but what? You have to listen to your body, guys. Removing the food, particularly carbohydrates, the starches, the sugars, the fiber, that toxins from your liver can soak into is already a bad idea. And, and yet so many people are removing carbohydrates. Now there are also toxins and negative things expelled from the body in the urine. And being hydrated is incredibly important for keeping your detox pathways moving. If you're not hydrated, even if you are eating food to detox your liver, you might stop the gut motility completely because your body needs more water to push that food through the digestive system. And the only reason I see someone benefiting from this is if they were drinking poor quality water. And yet, yeah, most people don't know those intricacies, you know, specifics on what to drink, what's so bad about it. My mom, for instance, never really wanted to drink water, which is really bad because she's a double kidney transplant patient and needs to keep her system moving. Only in the past year, when I got her drinking glass bottle mineral water, she actually started drinking it. Her body wanted it. Went from barely sipping on water throughout the day. She would get sick from just taking a sip out of the filtered tap water to downing a whole case of Fuji water. I think she's drinking like a gallon per day now. Overall, fasting is not needed, AKA not beneficial whatsoever on a proper diet. If you're eating high quality organic food, your source of water is clean, everything's free of toxins. You don't need to perform any sort of crazy cleansing or fasting because those foods are restoring your cellular health and removing the negatives out of the body. Yeah, if you want to stand an American diet drinking tap water, you probably do feel better fasting, even dry fasting, as you stopped poisoning yourself temporarily. But if these people lose weight, all they will do is release those toxins from the fat and concentrate them in the organs, almost as badly as those that follow the keto diet. Instead of fasting, if you want some similar benefits, you can restrict your portion size, maybe do OMAD with medium-sized meals. You know, I'll sit down and eat as much steak, rice, and beans as I want, but you know, reducing the amount for a few days or weeks, maybe just skipping dinner one night, resets my appetite, takes some stress off the digestive system, and you know, even a one or two day fast isn't that bad. But listen to your body, guys. If you're getting headaches, if you can't sleep, insomnia, those are gonna be way more damage to your body than the benefits of fasting will kind of uh, take over. So, thank you guys for joining me. I wonder if the uh, fasting dick riders are as butthurt as the keto dick riders, but I don't think that's even possible. If you guys want to check out frank stefanocom you can support me through all of my businesses. High quality meat, Frankie's Free Range Meat. We have the non-perishable goods on Frankie's Free Range Foods, organ supplements, Wi-Fi shielding, Frankie's Naturals, some very interesting health products for you guys to check out on each of those sites. But as always, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you for the next video.